So many years ago, I got sent to the Falkland Islands um, when I was part of internal affairs because the cops on the Falkland Islands were corrupt. I It was my job. I, I had the very first phone call from a previous police officer from the Falklands who phoned me up, um, or he phoned what we call a confidential right line. I just happened to be walking past the office. I don't normally pick up that phone. And I picked up the phone because it was ringing and ringing, and it was this guy who lived in Portsmouth, ex-cop from the Falkland Islands, and he said you're never going to believe what's happening down there. And that's how it started. So I went down, took a statement, um, and we, according to what he was saying, uh, a lot of the cops in the Falkland Islands, basically it was the Wild West. You know, there was no judicial system. They were making decisions. People were getting arrested, not arrested, so on and so forth. So I compiled a report. Uh, Hazel Blears, who was the police minister, or minister without portfolio, but she was the liaison between um, ourselves and the government. She worked for Tony Blair. She was an MP. Incidentally, now has been kicked out because of expenses, but that's another story. Um, she authorised us to go to the Falkland Islands. Um, right, so went down there. Um, the, chief, the detective chief superintendent came down with us, uh, a couple of senior officers and, and myself and another couple of officers. A team of seven went down there. To cut a very long story short, the chief, the detective chief superintendent, started having an affair with the attorney general who lived on the island. Right, so talk about misogyny right at the very start. Here we go. Right, so she's married to. I think the there's most hatred towards women there. Yeah. Mate. It's quite the opposite. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> He's so, having a great time. So the attorney general. <laughs> He's loving that one. So, so basically, when we compile the report, the attorney general's got to make the final report before it goes like to the CPS back back in England. So she's got to remain completely neutral. Again, he's married. She's married. So it went on. I only realised it after a couple of days because the island is really small. We stayed at Port Stanley, population about two thousand. And then I realised what was going on, right? So we, were, we had a dinner at the Malvinas restaurant and she suddenly appears. And I'm like, what's she doing here, right? And then she goes out, he go, and I can see them kissing. So I'm like, I'm going, fucking hell. I don't fucking, I'm a, I'm a DS acting DR, right? So I'm, he's a detective chief superintendent. I'm a sergeant inspector yeah, yeah, with a DR, yeah. right? So I'm a few ranks below him, but I'm not, you know, I've, I've been around a bit. So anyway, he comes back in, she's disappeared, and I'm fuming. I'm absolutely going nuts internally, I'm not saying anything. The whole team's there. I've got cops and we've got people, you know, I've got, I've got to try and contain this, but deal with it. So I went, boss, can I have a word with you? Can I have a word with you? So he, he's looking at me. Yeah, what do you want, John? I said, come on, let's come outside. I just need to have a quick chat with you. So I said, what are you doing? He goes, what are you talking about? I said, I've just seen you kiss that, that lady. He goes, he goes, John, I don't know. I said, don't fucking bullshit me. I've just seen you kissing that lady. <laughs> right? Oh, I love her, John. I love her. I'm going, for fuck's sake, she's married to an Islander. You're married. She's the Attorney General. Anyway, cut long story short, I ended up grabbing hold of him, <laughs> putting him against the wall and saying, stop it. Now, <laughs> words to that effect. Might have been a bit stronger. This one of my other, one of the other DSs witnessed me do that. Um, and off he goes. He starts crying. And off he crying. goes. Yeah, he started crying. Started crying. <laughs> and off he goes. Next thing, when my other mates who's there, it's like, what the fuck's going on, John? So I told him. I then go back and I'm like, I've just fucking strangled a fucking detective chief superintendent. You know what I mean? There's a hierarchical system in the job. So cut long story short, we had a little walk along the seafront and he'd, he'd fallen in love with her. Allegedly, she'd fallen in love with him. But I said, nah. I said, mate, not happy. Not so happy what, why does it matter? Right. So what it matters is, one, you talk about professionalism. Right, he's married, she's married to an islander. We're on an island, 2,300 people. We're 8,000 miles from home. It's cl it's massively unprofessional. Yeah. And two, she has to remain independent of the investigation because the evidence that we... So uh, he can so influence her decisions on people. Yeah, well, so well, say it like could be perceived like that. No, yeah, could, yeah, yeah, that, that's what, what I'm saying. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it could be perceived like that. So obviously, allegedly, he told me at that point, he stopped it there and then. He was lying to me because eventually when, when the investigation finished, she left husband and they, they moved in together because one day, about three months later, I get a phone call from another mate. It was, from, it was page seven of the News of the World. It was a whole page spread about um, this particular officer and, and what he had done.